Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the programmable outputs to have a signal display, for example LEDs, to show you whether your alarm is armed or disarmed. In the video I'm going to show you how to connect to your programmable outputs. You can do it on your main board or you can do it on the expander board. I'm going to explain the principles of how this works. I'll show you the wiring diagram. I'll then show you on the keypad how to set it up and then I'll show it working. Before I go through the theory of operation, I just want to show you what I'm referring to. This is called your main board. This is the panel and here are your zones. On this board, on the top left corner, you'll see something that says programmable outputs. This is what I'm referring to when I say programmable outputs. On the expander board, you'll see on the top right, you will see there are programmable outputs 1 and 2. So when I refer to programmable outputs, I'm referring to those and those. I will also be talking about a power source. Here is the auxiliary power source. You'll see there is a negative and a positive. Right, I'm not going to go through the explanation of how this works. Right, before I show you the physical connections, I'm going to explain it using pen and paper. And I do have some items here just to explain what we're going to be doing here. Now, the first one is, are you going to be using the programmable outputs on the expander board or the main board? So here I've drawn the expander board and the main board. Now, in this case, you can use either because the programmable outputs on the expander board and the programmable outputs on the main board function in the same way for this location. Which location? Well, if you refer to the manual, you'll see that there is number 414. So 4 and 4 is the location we are going to be using. This says ARM follow programmable output event. What that means is that when the alarm is in the armed mode, whether it's stay armed or away armed, you can set it that a light or something gets triggered to stay on. Now that location is 414. 414 then requires an output address. Now if you have a look at the addresses here, it says 00, 0 all the way to 20. Now, why this is important is because these addresses correspond to the programmable outputs that you may be using. So if you're going to be using the programmable output on your main board, possibly 4 and 5, then you will put the address 4 when it's time to configure this. Now, all of this will make sense when I go through the configuring shortly. I just want to show you this so you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the addresses and the expander boards and the outputs. Now, in this case, say you wanted to use the programmable outputs on the zone expander 1. So say you wanted to use these programmable outputs and maybe this was zone expander 1. So then you will have to put in either number six or number seven when you're configuring that output. Right, so that means you can use any of the programmable outputs. You can use on the expander board or the main board. All you'll do is code the physical address to the number that corresponds to the main board or the expander. I will sort of demonstrate that. So now I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen. When you put your alarm in the arm position, a 12 volt will be sitting on the programmable output. So this output here, maybe programmable output one of zone expander one will go high. High meaning 12 volts. So let's call that 12 volts. Now it will stay high for the remainder of time that the alarm is in the armed position. It doesn't matter if it's stay armed or away armed, the programmable output will stay high. Now once you disarm your alarm, this will go low back to zero volts. So this changing of state from 12 volt to zero or zero to 12 allows you to connect a relay board to control another circuit. So in this case, you want to switch on a light. Let's say, for example, you've got LED light. So here are your LEDs. When you arm your alarm, you effectively have a 12 volt sitting there. So if you connect a wire there, you've got 12 volts. Now you can put your load. And then after that, you can connect that to the zero volts. So now you've got 12 volts sitting here. You've got your load and then goes to zero. These programmable outputs are not able to give you a lot of current. So it's my advice that you should not connect your lights directly to the programmable output. So in this case, when I've written load, I actually mean relay board. So this is the purpose of the relay board. Now, if you have a look at the relay board, you will see that it's got 
common, normally closed, normally open, negative, positive. And if you use the IDS one, it's wired a bit different. It's normally open, normally closed, common, plus, minus. Now, in this case, I'm just going to use the Sherlatronics one, and this is it. They work the same, and you do not have to use these relay boards. You can just go and buy a relay. That will also work if you want to, but I'm just going to show it with the relay board. So what's going to happen now is you're going to need to connect your positive wire from your programmable output. Say, for example, you're using the programmable output one, and that has to go to positive of your relay board. So it's going to look like that. There's your red wire, and your black wire is going to sit there on the negative of your expander board. So what's going to happen is when you arm your alarm, this is going to go positive, and if I go to the other side of this wire, you're now going to have positive there and a negative there. So that needs to be connected directly to your relay board. Right, so there's your relay board. Right, so there's your relay board, positive and negative, coming from the positive of your programmable output and the negative on your expander. If you chose to use your main board, well, it will just look like this. Whichever programmable output will be your positive, and the negative will just go there. You'll find that there's an auxiliary terminal where you, where you can plug in your negative. So it'll go like that. Now what happens is your relay board gives you the ability to control another circuit. So now from your relay board, you could connect your LED. Now most people want the green telling them the alarm is disarmed and the red telling them the alarm is armed. So that works very well with a relay because this has a normally open and a normally closed contact. So when the relay is activated, one LED will go on, and you can set it that when the relay deactivates, the other LED will go on. So I'll just show you how to wire that. Right, so here I have an LED, and just if you want to know how you know which is the positive and negative, the longer wire is positive, then the shorter wire is negative. Also, you'll notice the one side of the LED is often filed down. The filed down side is the negative while the normal side is the positive. You can also use a multimeter to test this. So what I do is if I put the positive on the longer wire and the negative on the shorter wire, you'll see that the meter says 1.8. 1.8 volts to positively bias this PN junction. Now if I swap these around, you'll see that it won't work. That's how I know which is positive and which is negative. Only when I put the positive on the positive does it allow the meter to show conductivity telling me 1.8 volts in order to positively bias this LED and get the LED to shine. Right, I've quickly drawn a wiring diagram of how you can connect this up. So from your programmable output, it goes into the relay. There's your relay board. So it'll be positive and negative. So there you can see relay positive and it'll come out there and go to your negative over there. So the relay activates when you arm your alarm. On the relay board, you'll see you've got a normally open, a common and a normally closed. This one I'm going to call common, the one in the middle. So here you've got normally open, normally closed. Normally closed means that current can flow when the relay has not been activated. So that is why I've connected the green LED to the normally closed point over here. So here you can see I've drawn the uh, LEDs. I've got the red LED, the green LED. So the green LED is coming in from the 12 volt supply. Remember, you're going to have to have your own supply. Don't take it from the programmable input. You can take it from another battery source. And it's going to go, it's going to be connected to the green. The green is going to be connected to normally closed. The common wire is going to be connected to a resistor of some sort down to the zero volts. The same zero volt that's coming from your supply. Now the red LED is going to be connected here. And as you can see, it's going to be connected to the normally open. So having a look at this, when the relay has not activated, the alarm is in the disarm position. Current can flow from your 12 volt supply through the LED there, 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 through your resistor back to ground. So you're going to have your LED lighting. Then if you look at the red side, current is sitting here, but cannot jump across that open contact. So the red LED is off. Now you arm your alarm. What happens is this contactor moves, opens that, and the normally open becomes closed. Current can now flow through the red LED all the way there, through there, through the resistor and through the negative wire back to the supply. So therefore your red LED will shine when your alarm is in the arm position. So I've actually wired it here just to make it simpler. Right, so if you have a look, I've got my two positive legs of my LEDs, just like I had there. The positive of the red and the positive of the green are connected together. There they are, those are the positive legs of the LED. Now the negative legs 
each going to a different terminal on the relay. The green is going to normally close, the red is going to normally open. So there we go, red normally open, green normally closed. Uh, underneath the wire it actually says NC for normally closed. If you're using the IDS one, it looks like this. You can see there it says normally open, normally closed, and there's the common. So NO normally open, NC normally closed. Now, if you have a look there, you'll see there's my resistor. Both of these need to have current limiting resistors, and I've just put a one kilo ohm resistor there just so that the LEDs do not pop, because if you connect an LED directly to a big 12 volt supply, you're just gonna pop the LED. The LED does require a current limiter, unless you buy a light that's already got that built in. Right, so let me just demonstrate how it's gonna work. Right, now as I said, your, your positive feeding your load must come from an alternative power source. So here you can see I've got a big battery. I'm just going to put it here. There's the positive. And then the negative with a current limiting resistor will go to the negative of your big battery. Remember, the negative must be with respect to this positive, which means that don't use a negative of a different power supply and a positive of another power supply. Or don't use the negative of one battery and a positive of another battery. That's not how it can work. So there you go. I don't know if you can see the green LED is actually on. That green LED is not very bright, so I'm just gonna demonstrate it here. As soon as I connect it to the battery, the green LED is actually on. Now what happens is you're gonna arm your alarm, which is the same as taking a positive from the programmable output, and I'm just gonna use a smaller battery to represent the programmable output. So look what happens when I activate the programmable output as though you've armed your alarm. Can you see that the relay activates and the red LED now? goes on. Now when you disarm your alarm, you're effectively removing the 12 volts from the programmable output and you can see the relay deactivates and the green LED now comes on. So that's all you're doing. Arm, disarm. Arm, disarm. You can see there's a little LED there showing you the operation of the relay. See there, relay is activated, you've armed your alarm, relay is deactivated, you've disarmed your alarm, there's the green LED. Obviously you can get creative and come up with your own ideas. I'm just showing you the principle of operation and obviously I've used small little LEDs and that's why I've had to put a current limiting resistor here. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to code this on your alarm panel at the keypad with the menu operations and then I'm gonna connect it up to my panel and then I'm gonna demonstrate it. Remember, this is a tutorial. In the real world, you're gonna use different LEDs. You're gonna use much brighter lights. And if you'd like to see how to connect this to a 220 volt light or a flood light, I've got a video in my playlist. Please check it out. Right, you need to have the installer code. The default installer code is four nines. That would be 9999, followed by the star key should take you to the installer menu. If you try that and it doesn't work, please get the installer code from your installer. It should then look like this. You now want to go to location 414. Press star. Then you want to push one for partition one. Yours should look like this. It should say sublocation one, zero, the data. That means that so far nothing's been set for your programmable output when the alarm is on. Right, so let's choose a physical address. Right, I refer you back to the manual. We did the 414. Now we've got to choose the physical output. Remember I said to you, you can choose any of the outputs on the main board, they output one to five, or on your zone expanders, they can all offer you the same function. So let's choose output number five. Now can you see the address is zero five? So for sublocation one, all I'm gonna press is five star. Can you see that it now says sub one data five? That means that programmable output five will go positive 12 volts when we arm the alarm, right? If you were gonna do this on one of your expander boards, well then you will choose one of the addresses that corresponds to the output you wanna activate. So if you were going to use zone expander six output one, you would have typed 16 instead of five. Right, now in my case, I'm gonna use the onboard programmable output and that will be the programmable output five. So I can press hash, hash, and let's go check what happens on the panel when we arm the alarm. Right, so I'm here back at the panel. You can see there is programmable output number five is this last pin over there. I've got my one test lead on the negative. There's a negative over here. So I'm just gonna show you the voltage at the programmable output while the alarm is unarmed. 
So there you can see I've now connected it. You can see on my meter it says 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. Okay, so that's not going to activate a relay. So basically that programmable output is in the off position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to arm my alarm. I'm going to use a remote to arm it. And there you heard the alarm activated. It's armed and you even heard the relay. Now look at the programmable output. It went high, you see there, over 12 volts. So it's 13.5 volts, but don't worry about that, that's fine. And now when I disarm it, you see that programmable output goes back to the zero volts or thereabout. Right, so there you can see I've connected the positive of my relay wire, and my negative is gonna go here on the auxiliary. Right, so that now means that my positive is on the programmable five, my negative is here on the auxiliary, so that is effectively connected to this relay board, positive and negative. The positive feeding these LEDs and the negative is going to be connected to an alternative power source. So in this case, I happen to have a 12 volt battery over here. So here you can see I've got my negative and my positive. I've connected it to the positive of my LEDs and the negative to that resistor. All right, so there you go common through my current limiting resistor to the negative of the battery, positive going into both positive legs of the LEDs, and then the positive is coming from the positive of my alternative power supply, in this case, a big battery. Now, what you'll notice is that the green LED is already on because the alarm is in the disarm position. So in this case, when I arm the alarm, the red LED should go on. There you go, and when I disarm the alarm, goes back to the green. You can do the same for the programmable outputs on your expander board, which I'm sure most people will do. Right, you might wanna use a little box like this to store your relay board because you don't want it exposed like this. If you put it down and there's uh, some other electronics that can short out the wiring at the back. So in a practical sense, what you would do is you would have your relay board and these status LEDs probably at the entrance of your property or wherever you want to hide them. All right, I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.